Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today on this detailed explanation and installation of our new electrical system in our RV. This is going to be part one of three, which is going to be our lithium batteries, while part two is going to be the Victron inverter. And then part three is going to be 1200 watts of solar up on the roof. If you just want a brief overview of the whole system, I'll link that video down below, while this video is going to be much more detailed and a lengthy version. I'd also like to say a big thank you to our brand partners, Battleborn Batteries, who have helped us with this amazing system. They make some of the best lithium batteries out there, and we could not be more excited with how this system turned out. Now let's get into the install. Okay, this is the day before the install. You can see our bed is lifted up, and this is where we chose to put our batteries. And what comes on the bed, um, as a platform was this little tiny thin piece of wood which would barely be enough to hold pillows so that obviously had to go and what I put in here is two 1x12s this is a sheet uh, 12 inches and this is 12 inches um, and our bed is 46 and a half inches across and 30 inches wide up there and the reason i left this open up here is because there is our auto leveling the brain and the fuses for the auto leveling so if anything ever happened and i had to do something i need to be able to get to this so i couldn't just block it all up and actually that is where the wires come through right down there from underneath so we'll be able to run our wires back up at least the 12 volt and then the ac wires I think are gonna go straight through this wall where we are gonna have our inverter on the other side. It really did work out very well. You can see these game changer batteries are pretty sweet. Just one of these is like installing three lithium batteries and is probably enough for just the average camper to have very good power. Uh, just putting one of these things in would be a very simple, simple project. But of course we're gonna go above and beyond and get a little crazy and we're gonna put three of these things in and they'll fit there perfectly one two three and then we'll have all the room for the wires up top but these do weigh 80 pounds a piece so i'm going to reinforce the bed with these um two by threes i guess they are and uh just to give it a little bit more support because there is going to be 240 pounds of batteries in there if we didn't need the drawers under this bed I could take those out and these would fit flush on the floor and then we'd even be able to put one two three and then the inverter could go over there so you can squeeze quite a bit of uh, stuff underneath this bed especially with these these game changers these are pretty cool I gotta say I like them one really cool thing about these GC3s is you can get mounting kits, which um, are basically just little L brackets with screws and they go right to the feet of the GC3 so that you can then drill these down to hold it onto whatever it is you're mounting it to. And I think that's really cool because I remember when I was doing the van, like one of the last things I thought about was how am I gonna mount these things the batteries down so they don't move around and a lot of people use ratcheting straps and these um, little kind of eyelet uh, eyelet kind of holders that you screw down and then you strap and that works pretty good but I just thought this was a really slick easy solution so it seems like these GC3s are just kind of like designed that way to make it easier and uh, it's just cool that there's a different kind of style of battery instead of just the standard batteries so I'm gonna go ahead and mount the feet and just drill them down in so that they are mounted tight. And that way the batteries are ready to go. Okay, here we are on officially the first day of this install. Yesterday I spent about half the day, like I said, uh, getting these batteries in the right position, making sure everything fit, reinforcing the board underneath here and mounting them in. So the batteries are 100% mounted. And then the next step for me is gonna be to put all of my components on this back wall here. Now it'd probably be easier to do the components first because the batteries are gonna be in the way a little bit, but my brain, just because I don't do this professionally, um, I like to just get the batteries mounted in. They're the biggest, kind of hardest things to get here. And then I can piece together the system a little bit 
um, which is just how my brain works for this. After this, we're gonna make the battery cables to connect everything, but we need to put them in place so we know how long to make all of these battery cables. And off the power lead back here is gonna be my main fuse, which there's a couple different kinds of main fuses. This is called a T fuse. And then this style here is called an ANL fuse. And from what I learned when I researched this T fuse, is the best for safety for blowing uh, large amounts of power. If you Google the difference between the two, it can get pretty technical, but you can kind of see what the differences are. Um, these are about twice as much as the ANLs. This fuse was about $70. These are about 35. And so I'm gonna go with the main fuse with this T fuse, and then I'm gonna probably fuse the inverter separately with this uh, ANL. So I'm going with a 400 amp fuse on the main and then a 300 amp on the inverter. And once again, there's lots of different ways you can figure out which uh, size wiring and which size fuses. I recommend Nate from explorist.life just because he seems to be super knowledgeable about this. And uh, I'm just going by his recommendations. I've seen people put main fuses as low as 250 amps all the way up to like 500 amps. Roughly you're supposed to take your biggest um, power draw which is gonna be our multi plus 3000, which is actually just a 2400 watt inverter. But if you go roughly off of 3000 watts divided by 12 volts, you'll get 250 amps. And then you're supposed to take that 250 amps and multiply it by 1.5, which gets us to 375 amps. So that's why I went with this 400 amp myself. I know that's kind of a lot of mumbo jumbo and that's why I recommend doing a lot of research if you plan on doing this. And that's why I do these videos just so people can watch it and just see how I did it and then just use that as a research tool to add on to other things that you've learned and uh, make sure it fits for your system. So after the main fuse, I'm gonna have my cutoff switch, um, which is actually what I'm waiting for. I was gonna reuse the one that this coach already has um, and then I ordered a second one kind of late, so that's not here yet. So I'd rather just put another one in here. And so basically I'll have two cutoff switch, one's for the main battery, and then one outside, which actually cuts off the 12 volt to the breaker panel. So um, after that cutoff switch, you're gonna have your positive bus bar. And there's a few different style of bus bars on Amazon. Um, I used the 250 amp ones last time in my van that's a continuous rating which again is more than uh what you know the multi plus is going to be pulling out continuously but when i did that over a year ago they didn't have any bigger ones besides the blue seas like 600 amp one and those are well over a hundred dollars a piece for these bus bars so when i looked again this time there's a few more options um this was a 300 amp one and all these links will be down below so you can kind of see them um, but this is a 300 amp one and this is a 400 amp one um, And then the prices I think this was about 60 bucks and this one was more like 35 or 40 dollars and looking at the quality I do think this pike industries 400 amp one is a lot nicer it, They're both really heavy so I can tell they got good metal in them Well, I don't know if the metals good, but at least I can tell it's got weight to it um, but you gotta be really careful buying your components off of Amazon. I always try to go with high grade, good reviews, you know, blue seas, um, brand names like that, as well as just, like I said, reading all the reviews and making sure that people have used these and that they work out well and they're not garbage. The covers on them, the black one's kind of nice. You can see it covers completely up like that. It's got punch outs. I do like that, that's pretty nice. And then this Pike Industries has more of your standard kind of cover like that. So still not sure which one I'm gonna use. I'll find out here shortly. Also coming off of your negative lead off the batteries, the first thing off the negative lead needs to be this uh, shunt if you're using one. This is for the battery monitor. And this is Victron's smart shunt. So I don't have to mount that uh, monitor anywhere. I just use my phone to monitor these. And as long as you have all of your negative leads hooked up to your negative bus bar off of this, you will be able to see every single draw that comes out of your system. It's super accurate and it's very fun to see what your system is doing. So not showing a lot of the 
actual nitty gritty details of putting this together because we're in kind of a time crunch. We need to get out of here in a couple days and I don't want to rush this system, but at the same time, I can't record every single step. So I'm just trying to explain it as much as possible and uh, hopefully it gives you guys a good overview. This is that battery cutoff switch I was talking about uh, mounted inside the uh, storage bay in our particular RV. And uh, I was just gonna reuse this one, like I said, and I still could if I have to, but it's just easier if I leave this all wired in place, it'll just be a second switch that um, I'll just have to leave in the on position. So, and then I don't, I won't have a big hole here as well. So we'll kind of see how this pieces together, but that is the cutoff switch here, heads back into the main cap. Um, getting a little multimeter is a really handy tool just so you can check voltage you know 12 volt in out if something's hot or not and really handy inexpensive tool to get and um, back here is the wall where I'm gonna have to uh, put the inverter right there which will be a second part to this video and the hole will have to be drilled into the other side of this which is underneath the bed so so far we have the main fuse the battery disconnect will go there to the uh, positive bus bar this big space I'm leaving for the Serbo GX, which is a communication device, basically, so we can monitor this from anywhere. And then on the negative side, you have the smart shunt and the negative bus bar. All right, while we wait for the battery disconnect to show up, I'm going to start making battery cables, which will be my jumper leads from each battery to combine, like I said, these into a parallel um, grouping so that they are same voltage but increased amp hours and we are using of course 4 aught battery gauge believe it or not this is 10 feet of black and 10 feet of red so you can see how um, flexible that stuff is it is just a great um, flexible type of cable and so this is from Temco they are a US company and if you have some extra time for shipping uh, they are the cheapest on Amazon. Uh, I think it was just over a hundred bucks for 10 feet of each. I've also used Windy Nation, W-N-I, and they have faster shipping, but they are a little bit more expensive, but they also have super high uh, quality cabling as well. Very high strand, flexible copper, 4 aught. And then because it's so big, you usually need a special um, wire cutter that's capable of doing 4 aught, and as well as a crimper that's capable of crimping for us and these giant lugs. So once again, I'll put links to all this stuff down below if you wanna check it out. I've had this stuff since the van install and that stuff worked out really, really great. I do love those products. So I'm not gonna go into great detail on how to make these battery cables. They are pretty simple. You can uh, just look up on YouTube some tutorials and it is fairly simple. This is not a hydraulic crimper, and it's just a large kind of mechanical press crimper, and it works great. I got this with the heat shrink, so I didn't have to buy extra heat shrink, which is good. And this is tinned copper, high quality lugs, and that should be enough to get us going for the battery cables. Oh, and I want to mention that I used 10 feet on the battery cable for the van install, and it was about 5 feet to connect 4 batteries and about five feet to do the inverter install. So I didn't know how much I'm gonna need for this build. The jumpers in this one are gonna be bigger than in my van build. You can see I gotta go from positive to positive to positive, and then positive out, and then I gotta go negative, negative to negative, and negative out to there, as well as connect the inverter on the other side of this wall. So I'm hoping 10 feet's enough. If not, we'll just have to get a little bit more. A technique that's always worked good for me for uh, just cutting this sheath is to just get your razor blade after you have it marked and you kind of just roll the cable as you cut and kind of just put pressure into it. Um, seems to work pretty well. For the most part and sometimes you'll miss just a little bit but you can just come back in and cut quick and then it slides off like that 
All right, we have all of the cables done except for one of them, which I'm waiting to uh, measure out when I get the components up. And next, I'm gonna put on the heat shrink and I'm gonna use a heat gun. If you saw my van video, I didn't have a heat gun and I used a lighter and it worked, but it was just painful and it looked like crap. So these little tiny, this is like a 300 watt heat gun, has a high and a low. I've already used it multiple times. It was very inexpensive, well worth it. I mentioned before, I got uh, battery lugs that came with heat shrink, which is kind of nice. Otherwise they sell it in um, rolls or you know a few feet of them or, or sticks of them. You just kind of cut your own. Three quarter to an inch is what you can use on four aught battery cable. I think I like the three quarters of an inch. And you know, try to get a good thick walled adhesive type of heat shrink. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put those on. Oh, and also as a bonus, since we don't have power here yet, I'm gonna be using uh, my inverter off of our truck, which was another Battleborn system that we put in. Underneath there, hard to see, but there's a 100 amp hour lithium Battleborn battery along with the DC to DC charger, 90 watt so solar panel. And then also I just put in a thousand watt Renergy inverter. So that's what I use. This is what we use when we lived in the truck. And it's coming in handy. We're still living out of our cooler over there. And it's all working great. Put a piece of wood here so I don't melt my mat. But it has this little stand, which is kind of cool. And you just turn it on. And I'm telling you that it's so much easier than trying to use a lighter. It looks better, it's cleaner, it's quick. Trust me, get one of these little cheap tools if you're gonna be making battery cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these up and then we'll get this step out of the way. So this is kind of the easy part where you already measured everything, you already cut everything, you already made all the cables. And if you did it all right, they're just gonna bolt right in just like pieces. But we are finished with our connections back here and I'm just gonna go over them real quick again. This is our main cable that's gonna connect to our battery bank, which we don't have hooked up yet, which goes to our smart shunt. And then our smart shunt goes to our negative bus bar. And that's pretty much it. All of our negative leads will get hooked up to this so that the smart shunt can read the power going through it. Over on the positive side, same thing. We have our positive lead coming off that will come to this positive side of the battery once the battery bank is connected. Our main fuse, which is a 400 amp T fuse. We have our on and off switch. And then our positive bus bar, which all of our positive leads will go to. And it's really kind of that simple. I've seen some people put the master cutoff switch first and then the fuse second, but from what I've read, the master fuse should be closest to the battery within preferably seven inches, I think I read. Um, so then I put the, the switch right next to it, but I've seen it done both ways. But I really prefer doing it this way, making those connections, not worrying about uh, electricity because there's nothing hooked up to them. So I double checked everything, everything is tight. And next I'm gonna do my jumper leads from positive to positive to positive and negative to negative to negative. And that's gonna combine these three banks and we'll just do a quick multimeter test just to make sure it's reading out correctly. And then we will connect our positive wire to here, our negative wire to this negative lead. And that's gonna be connected to one giant battery bank and at that point, all I need to do is connect the main 12 volt, um, which will come down through that little hole on the floor. And then I'll connect it to our positive and negative. And then this is gonna be powering the coach instead of the battery on the tongue out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those jumpers connected and we'll come back with the test. 
show you guys a little bit of the terminal connections on these GC3s. So this is where the foot was removed. It looked like this and it kind of came right over the bolt. So it's really hard at this angle to kind of access them. And there's one, two, three holes. So you can kind of play around a little bit in that aspect. But if you're gonna use these included covers, which is pretty cool that they do because most batteries don't have these, you pretty much have to go straight up and down. And since these uh, four aught lugs are so big and the cable's so big, it's a tight fit, but uh, I'm managing to make it work. And I even have some flexibility to go down or up and I chose to go to the bottom hole and that's because I'm working with kind of a height restraint you see all my mounted pieces back there I had to mount them down a couple inches because there's uh, an inch of wood that kind of sits down so I got to make sure that doesn't hit or rub on any of this and then on this next jumper so we started uh, with that battery jumped over to here and then I was able to run this next jumper down below. And this works really great to have one on top and one on the bottom. The uh, cover fits nicely on there. And then that will go down below and wrap up on the underside over here. Okay, that was all of the positive leads and that actually went a lot smoother than uh, it could have. A lot of times, you don't know till the very end, are your cables too short? Uh, did the routing you know, not work how you planned? But So we went from uh, jumper to jumper. There's a double jumper down below, which jumps to this battery. And then, um, hard to see, but I went ahead and connected the positive uh, to our system here as well. Now I'm gonna start working on the negative side Okay, and at this point, that was the last connection. Um, this is all hooked up. So basically, uh, at this point, you have 810 amp hour, 12 volt lithium battery bank. So first thing we're gonna do is just test the bank and make sure, um, I'm gonna take the negative lead over to the far right battery and the positive over to the far left here. And it should read somewhere between 13.3 and 13.6. So these should be around, I think like 95% charge at that uh, state of charge. But that's it, that is the system and that's fully hooked up. So next I'm going to uh, figure out how I'm gonna route the DC wiring from the RV into here, so that will be the next step. Also, at this point, I just thought of this, um, we can hook up our smart shunt, which all I needed to do was add power to it. This is the power cable that came with it, plugs right into the bottom of it, and I just have that going to our positive uh, bus bar right there. And I'm gonna flip the system on here because it's currently off, which means it cuts all power here, meaning there's no power going this way. So I'll be able to shut power off to the coach itself. And then all that's uh, on this side is still hot. So we'll go ahead and flip that. And just like that, without having to uh, put a monitor in or anything like that, you can have um, a Bluetooth shunt reading on your entire system. Usually you gotta do an update as soon as you hook any of these up to get them up to the current version of the software. All right, that should be updated. Connect one more time here. Now it'll always read 100% right away. You do need to fully charge these batteries up so that um, it can know exactly when it is full. It goes off of voltage. And so it's always gonna read 100% until you do that full uh, charge cycle. But at least from here, we can read and see everything is working. It, it shows your voltage right here, 13.36, which is exactly what we got on the multimeter. And everything seems to be working. So pretty cool. So this did take me about, I wanna say three days, roughly. I picked up the batteries on Monday afternoon. Today's Thursday at noon. 
Um, so Tuesday and Wednesday were full days working on this. And this was also a lot of interruptions with hail and rain and packing and unpacking and not being able to find stuff along with um, helping Chris a little bit with the paint and the balances. I do really enjoy doing this. I, I'm just, I'm extremely slow at it. Um, but as you can see, it is, once you kind of get the grasp of the system and how it works, which I strongly urge people to research, read, watch videos, and just try to learn as much about this as possible. Or even if you're having somebody else do it, you can still know how your system works. Um, it's really not that difficult, but you do have to be safe and you do have to be uh, kind of aware of a few different things. So I'm gonna get going to the rest of the DC on the RV and we'll see how that turns out. Okay, here we are at the front of the trailer and these are the positive leads and the negative leads uh, that we need to hook up inside to the positive and negative bus bar. One, this lead right here actually goes to the electric jack, which uh, I don't know if these cables are gonna reach. I know this one won't, of course, but the other ones, I'm not sure either. So I may have to make new cables, but on my vehicle, it goes from the battery to an access panel. And you can see the wires continue up inside to those breakers. And then from the breaker, they go out to the disconnect and various parts of the, the coach system. So I'm just gonna run them through the floor where the auto level system goes, and then we'll connect it up and we'll be ready to rock. All right, believe it or not, all of the wires that we disconnected from the battery up front actually threaded through the hole down there and will reach so that means i don't have to make any new uh, wires or cabling at all i can just hook my positives up and my negatives up and we're gonna have a fully lithium powered camper here minus the inverter which will be uh, in the next series along with solar so I'm gonna go ahead and make these connections and then we'll do one last check and make sure it all works. All right, three out of the four wires were nice and easy. They reached right up. Like I said, I got super lucky. And then uh, they had a ground wire hooked up to the chassis, to the frame underneath. And it was just a little short one from the batteries up front to the frame. So I had to, um, use this other cable that I had, which barely fits to another screw on the frame. And so that's the ground for it. I've already flipped on the breaker outside. Remember I left the one out there and then we'll flip the one on here. There was a beep. I don't know what the beep was. No sparks. That's always good, right? No fireworks. No fireworks. And there it is. You can see our phantom draw on the system is nine watts, half an amp. Oh, that's because the radio turned on. It is? Well, everything kind of resets when you do the, the breaker. That didn't help must be uh, yeah so anyways you can see if everything's turned off that might be the fire alarm or carbon monoxide alarm or something like that but uh, flip the lights on Chris will you oh I'd love to you ready for this yes fireworks Ta -da! <laughs> it works <laughs> So I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Like I said, part two will be the inverter and part three will be the solar. I gotta get those going in the next uh, couple weeks here. Once again, thank you to our brand partners, Battleborn Batteries. And once again, I'll put links to everything down below so you can see what I used. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to, check out our other videos and we'll see you later.